Cops in Meridian, Mississippi claim Christian Andreacchio put a 45 pistol to his head and pulled the trigger. Christian's grieving family says no way. They're convinced Christian was murdered and they're willing to turn criminal investigators if that's what it takes to prove it. We just want justice, whatever form or fashion that might come in. She and her family actually went to the apartment to collect a lot of the physical evidence because the police didn't. I gave him a bloody shirt that was stuffed behind the commode in the apartment, a knife that had blood on it, and nobody knows where any of that stuff is now. Why doesn't he bag that and take it to the evidence vault? Why did they not pick up this knife? Why did they not take a bloody shirt? The guy did not change clothes after he shot himself. They turned to Dr. Jonathan Arden, a world-renowned forensic pathologist who worked on such cases as the Washington, D.C. anthrax attack and the D.C. sniper. From the beginning, I did have that feeling that something was not right with the, with the death of Christian. The gun was basically wedged between his upper left thigh and the outside of the bathtub that he was leaning up against. To make things even more curious, the entrance gunshot wound is in his right temple. Once he receives that gunshot wound, he is unconscious, he has no purposeful muscular activity like holding a gun or manipulating a gun. First of all, it's a very powerful gun. If you're leaned over and you, and you fire a weapon into the right side of your head, there's recoil. The gun goes that way. That's just, you, you watch Law and Order, you can get that. Right, the gun should have been close to his hand or, or certainly on the same side of his hand and the arm and the body should have just collapsed in a heap. It makes no sense for both of his arms to be outside the tub. It makes no sense for the gun to be on his left. It makes no sense for the gun to be wedged between him and the bathtub. Then there's the gun itself, a 45 semi-automatic. So that's the beauty or the functioning of a, of a semi-automatic pistol. You pull the trigger, it fires, it reloads, and you're ready to shoot again. In this case, the gun found with Christian had been fired and the hammer was forward or decocked as it is sometimes called. This makes no sense because if he had simply fired the gun, shot himself, collapsed, the hammer would be back or cocked and it wasn't. So someone had to physically do that. That is not possible when you have just fired a weapon through your brain. Another problem, the magic bullet mystery. The bullet itself is even more problematic. The bullet has not only blood, but it has some foreign material consistent with wallboard in the deformed nose of the bullet. So the bullet has had a strike against a piece of wallboard. These crime scene photos show a bullet hole in the wall, but it's directly behind Christian's body. There's no evidence inside the tub of any bullet strike. If he's in that position, as found when shot, the bullet after exiting his head would have struck off of the inside of the tub, but that didn't happen. There's no bullet strike inside the tub area at all. In order for that bullet to go through his head, strike the wall behind him, he now has to have the bullet ricocheting madly around the room. Dr. Arden also analyzed autopsy photos, which he claims reveal even more contradictions. The people who discovered him said he had only been dead a short period of time. However, he was in pretty firmly developed rigor mortis by that time, which means that he had been there for hours, which is inconsistent with what they said. Remember, Dylan and Christian arrived at the apartment at approximately 11.30 in the morning, about six hours before Dylan called 911. Lividity is the post-mortem settling of the blood. Whichever areas are downward due to gravity will become engorged with more blood. So you will see on the skin surface that those areas become pink or red or purple. Well. If you look at the photographs, especially from the morgue, he has lividity that is well-developed and staying in place on the back of his right 
leg. He, he was basically kneeling against the outside of the bathtub uh, with his knees bent. His calves were facing directly up to the ceiling. He has very well developed lividity in his right calf even after the body has been moved to the morgue. He had to be positioned post-mortem, after death, for a significant period of time with the back of his right leg facing downward. For Dr. Arden, it all adds up to one inescapable conclusion. Uh, in this case, in the death of Christian, I feel very strongly, and I, I've signed my name to a report, that I believe this is a homicide. This is what we call a staged scene. Somebody has staged elements of the death scene to try to create an impression, in this case, of a suicide. Unfortunately for whoever did this, though, they got it horribly wrong. If Dr. Arden is right, then why hasn't the Meridian PD investigated Christian's death as a homicide? We reached out several times to the Meridian Police Department, the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation, the District Attorney, and the Attorney General's Office. Each agency declined our request for an interview surrounding the death of Christian Andriacchio. The case simply has not been investigated. I'm not a law enforcement officer, and quite frankly, the fact that the Andriacchio family had to hire me is offensive to me. I mean, this has been really hard on Ray. She's, you know, she's had to look at pictures of our son that neither one of us should have ever had to look at, you know, stuff that is, is just heartbreaking. I have no idea what I'm dealing with. Uh, I've been in the criminal law, either on pro the prosecution or the defense side now for 34 years. I've never seen anything like this, nothing. If Christian was murdered, who stood to gain? The Andreacchios dug deeper into the day he died and uncovered what might be the most damning evidence yet. Up next, we hear from Christian's girlfriend, Whitley. Hello. Hi, is Whitley here? And his buddy, Dylan, has a message for Christian's family. Would you say anything to the family if they wanted to hear it from you? 